Hello, my friends. This is the podcast that brings the wealth of knowledge, expertise, and fun of Twin Smoke Shop, New England's premier smoke shop, right to you, wherever you are, whenever you want it. And that's Not Just Blowing Smoke. You can find us at our website, notjustblowingsmoke.com, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Not Just Blowing Smoke. Hey everybody, I'm Pastor Padron, and I've got Paul, Nick, and Dave with me today, and we also have Sam the Barman. Sam Sam the Barman has returned to Not Just Blowing Smoke, and he has brought the drink which we will be pairing with our cigar, which is the A.J. Fernandez Ramon Alones Toro, and we'll get into the specifics of that cigar in just a little bit, but what is this very dark-colored stuff that we are drinking right so yeah it's got the look of like cola syrup right it's deep and dark and thick uh what it actually is is an amaro so that translates literally to uh bitter in italian uh Mm. these go way way back amaros have been used originally medicinally and then moving into as an aperitif Mm. they are very very popular in italy every restaurant every every place has a selection if not a house blend Mm. that kind of thing it is a very very popular after lunch after dinner even a late night kind of thing um and it's essentially it starts its life as vodka as a neutral grain spirit that then individual distillers or whomever infuse with usually somewhere in the range of 100 or 200 different roots nuts berries leaves all kinds of various (laughs) things you can find all over the italian alps that give you that deep what are we going to do with all these leaves we've raked into the yard (laughs) i know let's start with the booze let's dump our vodka over it and see what happens Mm. you have to say with an italian accent (laughs) so this uh i think it's going to pair pretty well with what you're smoking here you're going to get a lot of those deep dark earth tones um it's got a really cool bitterness to it and it doesn't it's not too sticky it's a nice high proof Mm -hmm. so you're not getting too much sugar in there it should run right through the palate not interrupt your smoke too much and uh, like I was, I was telling these guys before we started here, there are a million Amaros. Mm. You can get out there. This one is Luxardo Amaro Abano, which Abano translates to bathhouse, I believe. Or a, it is a specific bathhouse that has been operating in Italy for 400 years, something like that. So um, people have been bathing in this too? You, that's, Twigs, that's, you berries. Get it. You get it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I hope they shave. Now, now I'm <laughs> looking at this brown-colored stuff and wondering. <laughs> wondering, wondering. Is, is, uh, is, it, is it sanitary? For is, for for those of uh, our the audience, side of the loincloth, who may not know Sam, what exactly is an aperitif? What does that mean? Uh, aperitif refers to an after-dinner drink mm-hmm. used in helping with digestion mm-hmm. and oh. or palate cleansing. One or the two, usually both. Right, helps your your system get through the big meal that you just had. Prepare yourself a little bit for dessert, that kind of thing. Sweet, right? cool. And yeah, so like I was saying, there's a ton of amaros out there. If you pick this one up off the shelf and it doesn't quite do it for you, pick another one. There are a million. All, they're all dark and somewhat bitter and somewhat herbaceous. I think is probably the word. But herbaceous. they they herbaceous. within within that realm, they run a huge gamut of different flavor profiles, and they're all worth trying. Every Sweet. One. Thank you very much, Sam. Well, Absolutely. Enjoy, guys. Down and spending some time with us. I'll yeah. see you in a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Sam. Mm. Take that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, the, the nose on this, on the drink, ooh. it because it has that the, almost the bitters like he was explaining, mm-hmm. it translates to bitter. If you have the nose to it, it almost smells like an old-fashioned. Or a man is it a Manhattan that has bitters? Well, they both have bitters, right? It's just one has vermouth, one doesn't have vermouth. I'm not a Manhattan drinker, so no, I, I don't know. I'm not well, really I, either. It's I it's one or the other, but but to me, I thought you might know, Nick. Well, I make them all the time. It's just I just sometimes don't I want vermouth after I've had it. <laughs> well, what it sounds like, like, some, like a vermouth. Sometimes, sometimes I want I vermouth, and some sometimes I don't, and it's just like, okay, what did I just mix? Um, but it, it smells to the nose. It smells like one of those drinks that you're getting that 
that heavy bitters in there. It does. It, you can definitely, you can yes. definitely smell that. Yeah. And on the palate, it's just like right up front. It's like mm. coffee, and coffee, then, caramel. Uh, yeah. The, 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 the Some chocolate in there too. Bitterness chocolate. to it. It's yeah, getting better every time I drink it. It's really, yeah. really coming on now. Now, the, uh, let's talk a little bit about the cigar here. Because that's where this is all going to come into play, how this was playing with a cigar. Uh, from the A.J. Fernandez website, they describe the Romanolones Toro and the rest of the line uh, with these words. Modern Cuban-born cigar maker A.J. Fernandez is now entrusted to reblend a classic Cuban cigar brand. This blend is powered by a strong, dark, Medio Tempo wrapper that AJ grows in Nicaragua on his own farm from a hybrid tobacco. Being from Cuba, AJ appreciates the cultural implication of this brand and has spared no expense in creating this unique blend. The wrapper is an Ecuadorian Habano Oscuro. The binder is a Nicaraguan Corojo 99. And the filler is a mix of Nicaraguan tobaccos, Corojo 99 from Jalapa, Criollo 98 from Condega, and Hybrid Esteli in Pueblo Nuevo. And this is the Toro. It is a 6x52 ring gauge cigar. How are we thinking the cigar is going with the, with the uh, Luxardo and and um, how do we think the pairing is working? The, it so I, I started the cigar about five minutes ago and, and had a few draws from it. Uh, got a lot of you know spice, earth, mm. uh, some of that cedar sweetness. Um, definitely a, a medium full, fuller body cigar without question. The moment I had the drink, it just kind of smoothed it right out. Yeah. The retrohale on the cigar on its own was outstanding. A lot of spice. Definitely full of body, but the drink now has kind of pared that down and, and kind of made it more smoother too on the retrohale. Mm. So it's definitely smoothing the cigar out. I'm not getting a lot of spice from it. I'm getting a lot more sweetness from it. I think it's fantastic. And Dave, what about you? What do you think there? Um, I think the drink is crazy. Um, definitely new to me. It's not something I would ever order. Um, it's getting a lot of like uh, caramel, cocoa, and uh, definitely the uh, long after finish of uh, coffee. The mm. cigar uh, is kind of like I'm trying to figure it out. It's like it's strong. It's a, it's I feel like it's a, definitely a full bodied cigar, and it's uh, it's just I feel like that it's like rich, but I have I don't know what it is yet. But it's like what that how to describe yeah, it other than rich. Yeah, but I think it's it's rich and smoky, and um, it's pretty good. Season. Nick, what are you picking up? Perhaps you can give Dave some words to put to the sensations on his palate. Sweet nuts. <laughs> sweet nuts. <laughs> I love me some sweet nuts. Um, a lot of spice, smooth spice that's just coming from this a lot of heavy tones um maybe some earthy dirty spice tones that come through for me on the cigar does but, everything have to be yeah. r-rated for you nick i mean can we just you know keep it pg-13 <laughs> <laughs> um it for me the drink and the cigar doesn't go well together it's not a complete pairing but the offset that the drink because the the drink for me is very sweet you get mm -hmm. that really deep sweet um note in there and the cigar is not you do you know you definitely get some sweetness in there but not a lot more for me of the spice and the earthiness that come through but the drink is making it more rounded so it's like the the opposites attract type of thing with the with the cigar this is a contrasting kind of absolutely oh, yeah. absolutely where you know the the earthiness of the drink you know is in common with the cigar but the drink is much more bitter yeah and sweet yeah. the cigar is much more rich mm. earthy <clears throat> and those two different things are bringing out 
I think, different things in the cigar and in the drink. You know, yeah, the, right. the drink, I, the I drink think to me is like a <clears throat> like a coffee molasses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's almost it, 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 it again without without uh, taking it away from what Sam had said. The the drink is almost and again I don't want to. Uh, it's like it's like Coca Cola almost without the fizz. Mm. You know, almost it's, it's, yeah. It's got the look. It's got the feel. It's got the taste of the caramel and that that deep like Dave said the deep molasses. Mm-hmm. It does yeah. Um, and again, this is not saying it's Coke. It's just it, it's. It's it's almost like sweet you're drinking and, it. It's sweet, 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 very sweet. Coke. Yeah. No, God, no. <laughs> so, but when you <laughs> not even that, that when you have that. it with a cigar, it kind of takes a lot of that spice away. It does. <clears throat> it's they're they're, it's like the opposites attract here mm-hmm. in that in that essence. It's you have something that's on the totally different spectrum as far as drink and what what you're expecting, mm-hmm. and then the cigar is giving you another whole thing on one end, but because the, they kind of coincide they kind of meet happily in the middle when you're when it hits your taste buds and mm. it, it's not something that's freaking you out and it's not something that's being like okay well i gotta stop this this is not what i want it's for me it's it's really kind of attracting me more and more and more yeah into it yeah i i'm still getting a lot of the spice on the retro yeah oh, yes yeah. but yeah you know the the way the drink interacts with the tobacco is, you know, I think it's, um, you know, you've used the term, Paul, smoothing it out. And it's helping me appreciate, I think, some of the more nuances and that earthiness that's yep. in the cigar that I wouldn't normally pick up because so much of that pepper is covering that up. Yeah. And the the sweetness and bitters of the drink is is, you know, muting some of those flavors a little bit so that you can appreciate parts of the tobacco that you would miss Correct. otherwise. Yeah, because the spice on its own, on the retrohale, is just so overpowering mm-hmm. that you're not, you're not picking up the earth and other flavors from the cigar. And this, this drink absolutely brings those out. Yeah. You know? yeah. And it, uh, I like it. I really do. I think this drink, even though I would never order it, and I think and, 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 <laughs> well, that's, and, and that's I'm, the thing. I'm glad we did. I mean, I, I, I'm glad we did because the more I drink it, the more I'm liking it. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a different drink that you would normally not go to at all. Well, this is what I love about Sam. Yes, you know, Sam's first thought is, well, let's not go. Let's let's go to a bourbon or let's go to a whiskey or yeah, or, you which know, is more tradi- traditional. Traditional. Mm-hmm. He's thinking out of the box, he and yeah. so he's going to bring something to the table that none of us would ever have thought of absolutely not you know he he brought out the bottle upstairs and 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 uh let me have a little sip of it and you know he's like this stuff needs more play people need to be you know and no they need to know that this is here because this could really complement a lot of stuff and you know i took that little sip and thinking about the cigar i i knew that there was there was enough in common there that it would it would go to get it wasn't so bitter or so citrusy that it wouldn't go but the the body of the drink matches the strong body of the cigar yeah because it's and it's not a drink that you can just kind of shoot down like no, a cocktail it's a, it's a sipper yes it's definitely a sipper but i really do think it's making me appreciate the cigar uh and um uh, uh Ma- making the cigar, I think, a little bit more refined than it is yeah. by yeah. itself, yeah. and not that it isn't. You know, a gr- that's not a diss on the cigar. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a. Um, and, and while we're while we're on that topic, I mean, the the ash on this is this nice white Nicaraguan you know, tobacco is really nice and white. Yeah, there's this the it's a nice oily toothy wrapper. Um, the burn line is spot on. Mm-hmm. And uh, the construction on this cigar is great. The draw is fantastic. You know, I'm really, really enjoying this. And, um, you know, kudos to Sam for coming up with a drink that I think really pairs with this that the four of us would never have picked off of a menu. Nope. I don't think anybody would pick off of a menu. Well, isn't this something that's, this is like one of these drinks that's always in like a mix, but never by itself? I don't know. I don't know. I've never uh, outside of here or outside. Well, of I right mean, it's now, like a bitters, so it's I've like never. Feel like it's well, something that it 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 is a bitters, <clears throat> but 
in different regions, uh, you know what I mean, in different regions of the world, they're drinking this straight. straight I mean, that's why it's full. that's why it's an aperitif. Is right. That it's, it's this is a drink that you have to help you digest a strong meal, and yep. this is a strong cigar. Yeah. It's. I think it's in my mind. It's helping me enjoy it a little bit better. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Don't you think? Yeah. And you know, it, it's the the kind of thing too. You know, you know, high nicotine. You know, content cigars. And I'm I'm going to go ahead and say this probably has a, a fair nicotine hit mm-hmm. to it. The sugar in the drink is going to counteract a lot of that. Yeah, right. And you know the 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 um, loopiness that you might get, or kind of you know upset stomach you might get if if strong cigars are not your thing. This is going to help you enjoy a stronger cigar without. You know those after effects. Yeah, absolutely. You know? yeah. Now, for me, I don't, I don't need no appetite to enjoy a AJ Fernandez or Mona Lomas. You know, I could, <laughs> I could have this in the morning with my coffee. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know those those at, those the finish of this drink is just this this little bit of you know sweetness along with some rooty kind of bitters and coffee and maybe some you know burned caramel you know kind of flavors there just go really really well with the earthiness and coffee notes of the cigar yeah absolutely Mm. it's almost like and i I don't want to use this as a uh as as a comparison but when you if anyone's ever had a a jaeger bomb what is a jaeger bomb jaegermeister and red bull that's how it started <laughs> many years ago, and I drank my fair share many years ago. And Jägermeister on its own, I couldn't do, mm. but it, with a Red Bull, it kind of smoothed everything out. Mm-hmm. You appreciated the drink. So <laughs> again, maybe it's a terrible comparison, I, but, uh, but, so. it, <laughs> but it makes sense. It, it kind of this sort of reminds me a little bit of Jägermeister. Yeah, the, the drink again. This is so much more refined. Mm-hmm. Is that the stuff with the gold flakes? No, that's uh, Goldschläger. No, that's Goldschläger. Okay, yeah. yep, that yeah. stuff I chugged half a bottle of that oh, one time not that was all surprised <laughs> Woo! that was a good night i used to do uh, irish car bombs mm. irish, oh. car, irish oh. car bombs those things were what is an irish car bomb uh, you don't look irish guinness i uh, know last name flanagan uh it's a guinness and then you have a shot of baileys and you pop it in there and you drink the whole thing it's a Guinness with a shot of Baileys. So you on no, top. so no, 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 no. no. You, so you, you get a whole the whole. Shot so you get a the you get a pint. Oh, so you get the the yeah. glass. Yes. yes, with the with and you yep. dump it in, in into there. The yep. Thing. Yep. and then you, you drink it. Drink it all at once. And all you at once. have the thing come and hit you in the teeth. That's why it's called an Irish car bomb. Yep. <laughs> It's a, I've had my a lot of those. I've had a lot. Not the the Jaeger bombs. But Again, the, I'm I'm not at all surprised. <laughs> I'm not at all surprised. Is it forty proof at least? At least, yeah. Give it to me. <laughs> I used to drink Jose Watch, Cuevo I can straight. do this in about four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. a long time ago. Mm-hmm. I, I think Nick put it in, uh, nailed it on the head with when it comes to Sam is that he takes you on a journey. Mm-hmm. He does yeah, yeah. With, with his with his drinks. He really does. He <laughs> yeah. kinda make, he kinda, it he may not be a place you want to go, but you're, you're going. Well, I mean, he's he's hit it he's hit it more times than not. Uh, True. With yeah. Me and and well, they've uh, never really been bad they've just been different incredibly you know? different yeah oh yeah mm-hmm. you would never get this at your down the street bar no it, you'd be like yeah uh, let me get this and they, they look at you with like two heads like what are you talking about what are you talking like about? i'll be honest with you when i first took my sip of this i'm like okay here we go we're going on another sam journey <laughs> but <laughs> hey journey. unlike that other one we had with the uh mm-hmm. the uh, the, medicinal the green one. stuff, oh, yeah. stuff yeah. which, which I, I really appreciated, but I mm-hmm. couldn't finish. I had to yeah. give it to Nick. This one, I absolutely... <laughs> Who did drink it? The more I'm drinking it, the more I'm loving it. I really mm. am, and it's absolutely pairing contrastly well with the cigar. And one of the, this is another great thing about Twins and the, the 724 Lounge upstairs. They got this stuff at yeah. the bar. It's sitting there. This stuff that, that uh, you know... You you may not ne- before today, I had no idea this stuff existed, mm. and right. you know Sam is up there who's a you know experienced mixologist, and he knows about this stuff and he wants people to know about this stuff, 
and and to try it and uh, hopefully you know people you know who are listening to the show who are in earshot of you know you know twins you know can come down and and try for yourself and if you're not go to your liquor store yeah. look this stuff up and and bring some home and and see what you think we'd love to hear what you think too mm-hmm. well, it's kind of like what we talk about in the humor about uh customers kind of breaking out of their nine dots and, and trying other cigars yeah. that they mm-hmm. don't normally do same deal with the bar yeah if you if you listen to this podcast and you and you understand what we're experiencing we encourage you to come up here and talk to one of the bartenders and and ask them about what they would where they would go with the cigars or where they, yeah. where they would like you to try and I think you're going to be incredibly surprised and happy you did yeah mm. and I think it's it, it the the bartenders Kendra um, Kimber Sam Lisa they're all getting out of their own comfort zone as far as recommendations to people that are smoking cigars and pipes now now that we're incorporating them into the show it's opening up their mind Sam is obviously sending us on a journey and Kendra is being like a ninja like serious <laughs> ta- tactician you know what i mean yeah. like an assassin with these drinks mm. and it's opening her knowledge up and and allowing her to be like okay well now i know what the cigar tastes like it's up so front. different it is and you know what i mean mm. so it's it's a wonderful wonderful thing it's getting them more knowledge of of the cigars and the pairings and it's getting us more knowledge of the pairings with the cigars i'm gonna go ahead and say it this Uh-oh. drink yes. is making me appreciate this cigar more yes. yeah. than I have appreciated it on its own. I like it better with this drink yep. than on its own. Yep. It's it's adding something to to the cigar that was I think, you know, also being honest, great on its own, oh. but has taken it and and is making the experience something else that I really enjoy yeah. a whole lot more. It's, for me, it's spreading out because I had the cigar before without the drink, without mm. nothing. I think I just had water with it, and the cigar is strong. The, the water? Yeah, I just had water wow. with it. I was working. I was working. <laughs> um, you're not allowed to drink on the Impressive. job. Impressive. So I, I was just having like water with it, and it's extremely spicy, full body. Mm. You got some notes on it, but with the drink, the drink kind of spreads it out mm-hmm. a little bit, and it makes you, like you said, makes you appreciate more, and you're, it's a little easier for me to pick up on some of the notes mm. versus just drinking it with water or with soda or whatever. The drink tones it down and spreads out the flavors mm-hmm. so you can pick it up a little bit more. But doesn't water it down. It either. does not. No, it does not. It's not. I don't think it's 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 drowning out the cigar. I think it's it is allowing you to taste and smell some things mm. that those strong pepper notes and earth notes on their own were uh, uh, masking things that are there in the tobacco. And I think the, the drink is pulling this stuff out. And that's what a great pairing does. A great pairing is going to help you enjoy both the drink and the cigar more than doing it on its own. Mm. That's what a good pairing does. Yeah. Now, Dave, yeah. It, yeah. as you have been listening to us here, and you've got this awesome two-inch ash on your cigar, yeah. which dimes. is phenomenal. Stacking dimes. Have you come up with some more words to maybe describe? Yeah, it's like a, it's like the richness. Earthy, it's like a real rich, earthy, uh, woody. Uh, taste uh, with a very spicy um, retro hail. Um, the uh, the drink is just really smoothing the cigar mm. out. Um, I have not smoked this before, but I can tell like just smoking this by itself, it would be like whoa. Yeah, you know, um, and. You know what I'm picking up more I'm, on this I'm, cigar, and I think it's because of the drink, is the cedar notes. Yeah. I'm picking up more yeah. of the cedar on Definitely the cigar. The cedar. And that's one of the things, too. You know, the cigar is wrapped in, in cedar when it's in the it's a cellophane sleeve. Um, I'm picking up a lot more of that than I did other, uh, without the drink. Yep. Is anyone else? Yep, I can, I can definitely pick up those cedar notes, too. A, a little bit. 
maybe on the retro hill i can i can pick up on that a little bit but everything is just kind of so complex and blended together mm. um for me and then the drink is kind of because it has that long finish it does have a very long it has finish. a very long finish so it's kind of like sitting in my jowls i feel like i'm bit. getting a little uh <laughs> <laughs> a it little is. a little citrus in the retro too like very small like orange citrus or lemon citrus or lime citrus <sighs> or that other citrus <laughs> that shall not be named. <laughs> um, I I don't know. I'd say I'd say more to the lime side. I'd say, but it's very, 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 very faint. Like I just get it just a little bit in the retro. In the retro, like I feel it in my nose. That's what I'm saying. That might that might be the drink too, a little bit because yeah, there there is a like a like a bitter orange flavor almost to this drink, mm. and it, it 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 certainly stays with you for a while. Mm. It's not. It's not clean at all. It's. It's going to stay in your palate for a bit. You smoke it. It's definitely going to pick up some of that. That bitter. Either that, or it's kind of like a peppered orange. I don't know if that's. Yeah. The peppered. orange. Yeah. The yeah. orange peel. Orange. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely get that too. A like bit. a burnt, burnt orange peel. Yeah. A little bit. Yep. Tad bit. Get definitely getting the cedar now. Mm-hmm. Definitely on that retro. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on here at Twins. We have a bunch of stuff coming up, and the next two events that we have here are. Occurring on February 13th in Hooksit and February 21st here in Londonderry. Both from 4 to 9, we have Hammer and Sickle. Hammer time. It's going to be Hammer time oh, yeah. here at Twins. And Eric Wentworth uh, will be there for both those events. Mm. And I'm sure he'll be on the show I'm when excited. he's here in Londonderry on the 21st. That's going to be a fun time. Uh, I love Hammer and Sickle cigars. Yep. They do such a great job at making mild to medium cigars. Uh, Hermitage mm-hmm. is fantastic. I love the Tradition yeah. series. Yeah. It's like butter. Oh, I love that cigar. Just that little bit of spice in there. Oh, yeah. And, and so that really, Maduro really nice. trademark is probably one of the coolest cigars because that is such a such a perfect cigar to get someone into something maybe a little different that smokes a mild cigar all the time yeah you it's a really like, hey, mild don't be maduro scared of this. try this out and they get to really taste the wrapper oh it's mm. beautiful good stuff and then on uh, march 19th in hooksit and the 27th yeah. excuse me the 27th uh, of march here in londonderry again both 4 to 9 p.m. we have a dunbarton tobacco and trust event and uh, that's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got Steve Saka. You've Saka. got the Sobra Mesa. You've got the um, Mi Carita. You've got the Brule, Sobra Mesa Brule line. You've got Sin Compromiso. You've got the Todos Los Dias. That, and then, of course, his uh, Moistura de Sacas. And uh, that's going to be a fun time. Let's not forget don't, about don't, don't, don't forget the Leave Me the Hell Alone Lens Arrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And don't forget the Umbagogs. The mm. Umbagogs, Umba. yes. That's a good cigar. Man. It is a good cigar for the money. Yeah, that sounds it's very gosh, good. Man. It's a great cigar. That is. It's a good smoke. Mm. A lot of people, that's probably one of the ones. Everybody's so focused. A lot of guys that come in so focused on the Sober Mesa, the Brulee. Uh, the Tricky Traka, which are great cigars, but a lot of people overlook that Umbagog, and it's a, a, a solid that is nine dollar cigar. It is not overlooked in hook set. Let me tell you, like we we have a hard time keeping those in stock. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk go. about the three pack special that's going on right now. Do you want to share, Paul, about that three pack and yeah. what that gets you? Sure. Well, the three pack is your really your ticket to the event. Uh, it's uh, three cigars. You have the uh, Brulee, the Super Mesa Brulee. You have the Tricky Tracker and the Micarita. Um, oh. All three are uh, priced at twenty nine ninety nine in that pack. Normally they'd be thirty seven dollars, and it does come with a ticket, which is your ticket for the event. Uh, that ticket on the twenty seventh will uh, <coughs> entitle you to a drink pairing. That one of our with Steve Saka with Steve Saka, sorry, uh, that uh, Kendra and her crew will put together for you, and also it will be twenty dollars off any Dunbarton tobacco box that you want to buy that night. So we only have maybe 
what we have maybe just a couple dozen left we, right. we made 50 yep. so they're going quick yes uh, we're, we're already halfway through them yep so don't don't hesitate come on in and get one before they're sold out and uh, you'll be able to enjoy a great night with Steve soccer and us on the 27th of March yep oh, yeah yeah I yep. lost my dimes oh I'm sorry Dave yeah. that was a that was a that was a long that ash. was a long decent ash, set decent set of dimes really there. good you had a good looking ash going on there mm. You can stay in touch with Twin Smoke Shop on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and of course at their website, twinssmokeshop.com. Uh, let's do a little uh, Pastor Padron cigar confessions here. Ooh. We haven't done that in a while. Mm. And the thing that I want to talk about tonight, uh, and my, cigar confessions for those of you who may be just tuning in is really about cigar etiquette and and uh, what you do and don't do and um, one etiquette of the things critical. that uh, I confess that I really just it skeeves me out is watching somebody come out of the humidor with their cigar that they have purchased and then licking it all over the place, like it's some kind of popsicle, <laughs> making it all nice and shiny, and then taking the community cutter and chopping that head off. That is just gross. Ew. Gotta gross love, and disgusting. Gotta love that. You know, the community cutter is, you know by definition for the community and you know we don't want to be starting our own kind of coronavirus here <laughs> at the shop mm -hmm. so if you really must you know lick and lap your cigar before you cut it and i really don't know why you would want to do that but you know to each his own use your own cutter don't use the community cutter after you have lapped your cigar and leave a sticky head stuck on the cutter for people to clean. That's gross. Don't do it. Mm. That's why we're cleaning 100 times a day. Oh, my gosh. I know. We're going to have to have like a one of those UV lights right over the tray. Oh, my gosh. You know, there's some places where, you know, if you, put like a, a you put a black light over the community cutter and you'd think that something really nasty had happened there. Ooh. But uh, um, be considerate of the people after you who are going to be using the cutter. Cut it first, then lick it if you must. But there's no reason to lick it before you cut it. <laughs> well, I think okay. I think people would probably wet it first because they're not might not be sure how uh, humidified the cigar is, and therefore they want it to not fall apart when they cut it. That's the only reason I can think of. But Perhaps, but still, here at Twins, it doesn't rectify the situation. We are meticulous at keeping our cigars properly humidified. And uh, um, we we are we have alerts that go off when things are uh, getting in trouble. You don't ever have to worry about it. You know, in the winter time, if your skin's getting dry, come into our walk-in humidor. You know, walk <laughs> around for ten minutes. You know, look at the cigars. Your face will feel great when you leave. But don't lick the cigar before you use the community cutter. All right. All right. Enough said. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Does anyone else? Does anyone else have anything to add to that? Nope. No. Nope. Good. You good? Yeah. Just don't good? do it. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. There we go. Mm. You can get a cutter for a few bucks. I mean, come on. Mm. Don't don't be leaving your flu germs on the on the cutter for somebody else to get. All right. There we go. Um, what's our final verdict here on the Ramona Lonis Toro by A. J. Fernandez? Mm. Just a wonderful, well-balanced, uh, full-body cigar. <clears throat> it is uh, that cedar, uh, earthy, a little bit of cocoa. Um, that retrohale is just phenomenal with the drink. It's just so smooth. Mm. <clears throat> wonderful spice. It's superb. It really is a superb cigar. 
Uh, I'm, I have, and I've been a, a, a big fan of AJ's for a number of years. Mm. Um, I actually got to know him uh, or his line of cigars through the mail order catalogs when he was blending for General through Diesel and Man of War and Ave yeah. Maria uh, before I ever you know, came into Twins and started smoking his New World and San Latano and, mm. and then in the last couple of years, the Ramon Alonis and the Bea Cetez. Mm -hmm. He's got so many different cigars last out there. Last Call, too. I love Last, last Call. Yeah. Really, really good. Great price point on that. Mm -hmm. Excellent cigars. That New World, man. Mm -hmm. The New World. That thing is a... The New World Maduro, that thing for me was my first introduction to AJ. Is that the Puro Special? No, no, no. no. The regular... Um, Oh, the regular box okay. press. The regular yep. box yep. press. That's yep. fantastic. Yep. That, yeah, I used to buy them. When I first got introduced to them, it was the packs, and I used to buy the packs, like, every day. Mm. And I used to smoke them. I used to work, do security in, uh, uh, in Woburn, and uh, I used to walk around the parking lot on my break, and I used to smoke, like, two or three of those things, man. I used to chain smoke those things. This thing was good. Mm. So good. Dave? I'm enjoying this real... Thank you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you can go back down now. <laughs> oh. Dave? I think he's done. Think what he's do you, what do you think of the cigar? Dave's not home. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> no. Um, it's really... I'm enjoying how... Um, I'm enjoying the retro ale the most. It's very, it's very smooth, spicy. It's because of the drink. It's got like this uh, burnt citrus uh, in the retro ale. Um, I'm loving it. I give it two thumbs up. I, I'm really enjoying the cigar. I, I have to be honest. I'm a, I'm an AJ fan. I like I like his stuff. Um, he makes a very very good quality cigar. Um, the price point on these is uh, higher than most of his other stuff, but it is really well put together and certainly worth it. It's a medium plus uh, to full to me uh, cigar, nice, earthy, um, some very deep, rich kind of coffee notes. It's got those subtle, <coughs> excuse me, subtle uh, cedar notes there that I think the drink is really pulling out, pulling forward some really strong spice in the retro and um, if you like a stronger cigar this is definitely uh, going to be up your alley and you should definitely try it mm -hmm. in my opinion yep. I do have a uh, a little story if we got a minute here I'd like mm. to talk about sure. regarding AJ Fernandez Sure. Um, like I said I've been a big fan of his for a while and uh, he doesn't come to the States that often. He uh, doesn't speak a lot of English. He stays mostly in Nicaragua and maybe a few other Spanish-speaking countries. And uh, uh, will come up to the, the States for a trade show or two. But he pretty much stays down in his home, home country. But uh, about a year and a half ago, my girlfriend and I were in Puerto Rico. And we were at the, the, in Old San Juan and the, the Cigar House, which is a very nice cigar shop down there. And... Uh, we, I just happened to be shopping around, and a girl says, uh, oh, I see you're looking at AJ's cigars. And I said, yes. He goes, do you realize he's going to be here tomorrow? And I was like, floored. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. I would love to be able to uh, to meet him. So the next day, next next night, we went there, and the place was packed, and he's holding court. And uh, so I went up to him when I had a chance, and in my... <laughs> You know, in my very slow English way, because he doesn't speak much English, <laughs> I said, I, I introduced myself, and, you know, I'm a I fan. am Paul. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, Paul. <laughs> I, Pablo Maduro. <laughs> I, uh, he smokes cigar. <laughs> puff, puff. <laughs> I introduced myself and explained a little bit about, you know, that I'm in the cigar industry, and he had his interpreter right next to him. Mm hmm. And uh, what he didn't pick up, the interpreter interpreted what I was saying. And mm -hmm. he says, he comes to me, he goes, thank you so much for your support. And he just, he pulls out of his jacket a cigar in a bag. Mm -hmm. And he says something to his interpreter. And the interpreter says, he wants to gift you one of the original San 
Latano Habano cigars from 2011. Wow. Yeah. And uh, needless to say, I was taken aback, you know, thanked him profusely. And I held on to that cigar till last summer. And I just said, Holy I'm just going to smoke it. I, wow. I just can't wait any longer. And it was wow. a phenomenal I would have I would have lit cigar. it up in front of him and just smoked well, it. Well, we were, we were, believe it or uh, not, we were all, he and myself and a few others were smoking the Ramon Alonis that night. It's a good mm-hmm. smoke. Yeah. Man. It was uh, definitely, it was a great night. That's you good, didn't, man. You didn't ask him if he had a Maduro? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm just like, do you have a Maduro? Mm-hmm. But, uh, it's a like uh, great story, stick. man. Yeah, he, yeah he's, awesome. I mean, from what I understand, he's a great guy. You know, if you speak yeah. with Nick Goss, Nick Goss, mm-hmm. you know, knows him a little bit too. So he's a great guy. He even knows Nick without even meeting him. He, he just came right up to Nick and said, hello, Nick. You know, how are you? And, and Nick was, <laughs> Nick was floored. Yeah. He didn't realize he even knew his, what his name. But well, he probably has his calendar. Probably. As well. He probably yeah. has his cue cards too. <laughs> this is Nick. His lock of hair in the, in the, in the frame. Oh. <laughs> but... No, it's a, it, was a, it was a good good to meet him, and uh, it was a good night. That's awesome. All right, let's get ready to do part two. All right, we're back for part two, where we review a pipe tobacco, and... This time around, we are going to fourth generation, Eric Stokeby's brand, and we are going to be smoking his 1966, which is gets the year from his uh, uh, the birth year of his younger brother, and um, mixes Virginias and Burleys, Black Cavendish, and just a pinch of Latakia, all topped with a little bit of Caribbean rum. And uh, let me read the tin description for you so that we get the uh, full experience here. 1966, the birth year of my brother and the youngest of the clan. Like me, Lars Christian also spent much of his youth in our factory learning about the trade. This great mixture is blended from mature Virginia's ribbon cut, Burleys and some original black Cavendish, and a pinch of Latakia. A complex and unique blend that provides a medium strength smoking experience a dash of Caribbean bl- a dash of Caribbean rum is added to complete the blend signed Eric Stokeby it is a uh, wonderful little mixture here that we are smoking and what is this drink that comes in this little glass that Sam the barman has brought back down to us Sam. <laughs> Speak, Sam, speak! I do love the intro every time, guys. I appreciate it. Um, so this is what we're calling a Blackbeard Manhattan. The Blackbeard Manhattan. The Blackbeard Manhattan. Black Manhattan. Black right? I had the Blackbeard just a few weeks ago. It's, it's been shaved <laughs> off now, but yes. maybe we'll bring that back. We're all very game. thankful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Blackbeard Manhattan, this is a Kendra creation. She's the manager upstairs. Um, so we are doing Basil Hayden's Caribbean Rye, right? So that's rye that's been aged in rum barrels. Mm-hmm. Thought that would go really well with your smoke here, the little drizzle of rum, right? Mm-hmm. So we take Caribbean rye, we do a little bit of maple syrup, and a dash of chocolate bitters. We take mm-hmm. the glass that you're using, and we put it over some smoked cedar chips, get some smoke in the glass. So you should get a little bit of smoke. You get the nice dark rye, then a little bit of rum kick, and then you finish on just a little bit of maple and uh, the uh, other ingredient there. <laughs> a little bit of maple, a little bit of maple, and the, the chocolate bitter the comes other, through at the end. The there other ingredient, the other ingredient yeah. there. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, we Kendra came up with this completely separate of you guys deciding to smoke this tobacco, and it seems like it's going to play really well, right? I mm-hmm. think so. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think so. Mm-hmm. Good, good. Mm-hmm. Let me know what you think, boys. All right, cool. thanks, thank Sam. You, Sam. Anytime. Say thank you to Kendra for us. Yes, Always. the potion master. Mm. 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 This is going to be a quiet part. <laughs> mm. Yes. So, my initial thoughts on this tobacco is that it is very smooth. The when they say pinch of Latakia, I think they really mean it. There's just a touch of smokiness there. Yeah. You know, you really yes. cannot. The Latakia is in no way a major player in this. It just adds just a little bit of. It's almost used like a sprinkling of pepper on something. You know, it's just just you just got this little bit of smokiness, and it adds this little bit of body. But other than that, it's the 
Virginia's and the uh, the Cavendish that's that's uh, going along. You've got some nuttiness from the Burleys, and you know that um, kind of brown sugar sweetness from the um, black Cavendish there, and that little bit of Caribbean rum. You can there's this oakiness that's there, and I and this little bit of kind of molassesy kind of sweetness. It's you know this is not an aromatic in any sense of the word. You know I think the, the you know, using the the Caribbean rum in this uh, mixture is really there to kind of round out the flavors that are already there in mm-hmm. the tobaccos. Yep. And I can feel. I it. think I think it's going great with this Blackbeard Manhattan. What mm. uh, What do you guys think? All right, I'll jump in. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Nick and David just well stoned. In, into, yeah, exactly. <laughs> thank you. No, the the tobacco is incredibly smooth. Mm. Absolutely, uh, just a little bit of spice. Just the the sweetness though is 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 there mm. with the drink pairing. It's really it just makes this tobacco pop. It really does the sweetness. I got a little bit more spice out of it, but it's just so well balanced and smooth. That retro hail is just so pleasant. Mm. <clears throat> really, really good. Mm. Yeah, I'm definitely getting that oakiness you were talking about, Dan. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was I had a little bit of the pipe before uh, we got the drinks, and it was uh, once once I took some of the drink, it was just like the like the Virginias, mm-hmm. uh, like perked open. Um, uh, the the I feel like it maybe even got a little bit more spicy mm-hmm. in the retro hail. Um, it's just like they're this is a this is a complimenting pairing. Yes, they're, they're very uh, they're very similar, um, and it is very well done. Yeah, mm. Nick, Our, what, what are your thoughts? Can you still speak? Yes, I can. Um, the the sweetness is uh, playing a big part for me. The a little bit of spice you get the oak in there a little bit, and both of them are complementing each other. Um, they're just so well balanced, mm. smooth, light. Got the sweetness, little oaky aftertaste there, and then the spice on the retro hail for me is is astonishing. Mm. It's very nice. Yeah, in the in the drink too, because you know we've had the Caribbean rye before, mm-hmm. and that had just a little bit of sharpness to it. So with the maple syrup added to it, with those little chocolate bitters, it just smooths it right oh, out. Yeah. It mm-hmm. just adds a little bit of that sweetness. It's fantastic with mm-hmm. this tobacco. Mm-hmm. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Su- superb, Dave. Superb. Superb. I'd, I'd have to agree. This is this is a great pairing. Sam's really turning up the heat. He is. Well, wait. He didn't say he brought it down, but it was Kendra and that put it together. Kendra, Kendra created the drink. Oh. But he decided to pair it with the tobacco. Yes. Ah. Ah. Oh. He's using Kendra's own work against her. <laughs> 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 and mighty fine work that is, yes. I might add. Um, yeah, this is a, a r- remarkably smooth tobacco. Um, medium body. Yep. You know, this, this could be easily, for me, an all-day smoke. Um, and I, I like English blends. You know, last week we smoked the, the spark plug by Mm -hmm. GLPs. That's a very strong, fuller bodied yet very smooth, you know, English blend. That's something for me, I can have a bowl of or two, and then I, I kind of need to take a break. Um, the the Latakia in this is at such a point where um, it really wouldn't bother me at all to smoke this all day long. It's a great, great smoke. There's lots of flavor here. Um, just the right amount of, of sweet and spice, you know. It's very, very balanced, very complex, um, and very, very enjoyable. And, it, you know, it just... The ribbon cut, you know, was great right out of the tin. It's it lit right up. It's staying lit. Yeah. It's really it's really performing very very well. One thing you're not going to hear tonight, anyone who's listening, 
intently is the clicking of lighters <laughs> as it was last week where we yeah. were all clicking <laughs> like every 30 seconds mm, you know, and, and the funny thing is is that this really felt moist while you were putting it in too like the, yeah. you could, the, the, the tobacco was spongy uh, mm. but it is smoking like a champ yeah. mm. I mean I've only I've been smoking this for maybe 10 minutes and I've only had to relight once that's it yeah. mm -hmm. beautiful mm. really good. and it, it is a very smoky tobacco mm-hmm you get lots of nice smoke off of this, and uh, you know the the aroma from the from the smoke is, you know, very woody, a uh, little bit of spice, and there's this this little hint of sweetness in in the in the aroma. It's very very pleasant. It's a very nice room note, I think, on this tobacco here, mm -hmm. um, and you know, again, that just goes so well you know that you, you you sniff the blackbeard's manhattan here and you get this nice sweet hint of maple you know and um uh it's 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 just really good the maple i think goes really well with the virginias which have yeah. that nice yeah. sweet kind of fruity um stewed fruit kind of taste in this particular mix um it's very very pleasant and um you know, I, speaking, you know, we have a lot of tins to choose from here at Twins. Um, I've, I'm, I'm losing count of, of how many offerings we have as new stuff comes out and we bring it in. Um, and kind of like with the, with the humidor, we've talked about this before that there are kind of hidden gems in there that mm -hmm. people often overlook. The fourth generation, 1966 is one of those blends for me. This is something that is um, often overlooked, you know, for whatever reason. And it's just a really, really good tobacco. Um, I'm really loving this stuff. And um, uh, I wish I wish that more people knew about it. Yeah. I, I love seeing, like, people like... I uh, haven't been in here before that smoke pipe and come in and they see our selection and they're like the first thing you hear is oh wow mm. you know because it's like they're like they didn't even know like that stuff existed mm -hmm. you know sure. um, it's absolutely amazing the selection we have of pipe tobacco mm. it's awesome and it's growing which is even more awesome yeah I, th I think our tin selection right now is something around 80 80 different kinds of tins and then we wow. have 40 plus different bulk tobaccos too so you yeah. have well over 100 different kinds of tobacco to choose from there's no way on god's green earth if you want to smoke a pipe that there's not something here that you would like oh, yeah. and um you know it's as people are seeing you know seeing that expand and as the word spreads um, more and more people are, are coming in who are pipe smokers here, mm -hmm. which is awesome. And, um, uh, you know, we have a pipe club that meets once a month on this, the second Saturday of the month. And that's been growing and growing and growing. But exponentially. Um, yeah. I mean, we're, you know, we're averaging, you know, 20 something people now coming in on a, on a Saturday afternoon to, to smoke and talk and, and now we have this thing called Pipe Club Pub, um, in, which is like a class on pairing um, uh, pipe tobaccos with spirits. And um, after giving that talk, we then, you know, again, include the 724 Lounge, and you're offered several different pairings to choose from. And, of course, that's a, that's a paid thing, of course. But uh, that's that's been growing too and um now we're going to be doing that with cigars and i'm really excited about that yeah oh yeah um it's funny how pipe club pub has now spawned cigar pub and uh starting the 24th of uh february we're going to start doing the same thing for cigars and we're going to be featuring uh 724 cigars on that first uh, uh, night that's a Monday night from seven to nine here nice. at, at Twins. You'll get a similar presentation that is geared for uh, pairing cigars with with spirits, 
and uh, for thirty dollars, you're going to get two cigars and two drinks. That's and a deal. That's a really, really good deal, and um, uh, I'm wicked pumped about that. And uh, we're going to be doing that on a regular basis. I'm sure that's going to be another sellout thing. Yep. <clears throat> but um, you know, are you guys picking up anything else? Anything new with this? What are what are your thoughts as you continue to enjoy the pairing, um, or not enjoy it? Well, there's no there's no not enjoying it at all. This mm, is this yep. is a phenomenal Absolutely. phenomenal t- pairing. It's mm-hmm. just bringing out that sweetness in the tobacco, mm-hmm. um, that the retro hill, that little spice to it, but incredibly smooth. Uh, like I said, a little bit of that woody uh, uh, aroma and flavor too. <clears throat> it's it's. It really hasn't changed much for me. Mm-hmm. It's just continuing on, very consistent, excellent. And I have to say, yeah, after all that talking that I just did, I didn't have to relight the pipe. Mm. It's still it's still going, and I love that about this tobacco. Yeah. It's very very good. I'm just it's performing really really well. You know, it's also cool because just kind of taking a step back to what you were talking about about this cigar. Uh, sorry, the, the pipe smoke is coming mm-hmm. out now. The the great selection that we have, and it kind of just brought back the customer that you had prior to coming onto the show mm. was that we're getting a lot of cigar smokers now wanting to get into pipes. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it's not just pipe smokers that are just coming out of the woodwork that have always smoking pipes. It's a lot of these customers that we've gotten to know that now want to venture into the pipe world. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. That, that gem was all set to go into the humidor. And he saw you smoking a pipe, Dan, and he's like, wow, you know what? I've really been thinking about this. I think tonight I'm going to get a pipe. And he had to go and get a pipe, tool, you know, cracker, cleaner. Back cleaner and it, and it was just, it's phenomenal to see that. It really, yeah. really is. Oh, yeah. They're out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whether you know it or not, you're out there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a, I'm a part of this online uh, uh, cigar and pipe group called Barrel Burners. Mm. Uh, did I talk about this last week? You did I can't not. Remember. No. Okay. And... Um, it's a it's a uh, really it's a it's a cigar and bourbon and whiskey group, and uh, they also have a, uh, a growing pipe smoking you know group on there and on uh, a lot of these new groups uh, and uh, that are popping up all over the place are not using. Facebook or Twitter or any of these places to talk because of all the restrictions and things that are going on. And so they're actually using a, a gamer platform. They're using the Discord mm. uh, gaming app to do their um, stuff. And there's this in in the Barrel Burners uh, room on that whole thing. There is a, a, a pipe room. And I've been in there you know, leveling up as as things are going. And uh, I've gotten the nickname uh, the Darth Piper <laughs> because awesome. they're saying I've basically Jedi mind-tricked people into buying pipes and things and, and, and spending, spending money that they were saving for trips, you know, to, to do stuff. And uh, I'm actually trying to, I'm actually trying to get a, 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 a a picture that I can make into a sticker that says Darth Piper, and uh, I've actually started. I've actually started a hashtag Darth Piper is real. <laughs> <laughs> I've been using on their on their stuff, but um, yeah, it's it's we're experiencing that here. You know that that people see um, more and more people smoking pipes. They're smelling it, and. Not that us, you know, all four of us here, as much as we enjoy the pipes, and enjoy cigars, and we're we're not trading one for the other, but it's definitely adding something. It is, mm-hmm. and I think the more people realize that there is, if you really enjoy tobacco and tasting it and smelling it, that smoking a pipe is another avenue to enjoy it in ways that cigars just aren't designed to offer yeah you know it's it's you know kind of like the difference between you know driving a car and riding a motorcycle it's the 
they're both vehicles that go different places, but it's a completely different experience to ride a motorcycle than it is to drive a car. Yep. Is that a, de- a decent example there of the difference? Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Mm. Very, very good stuff. Um, let's talk a little bit about what's going on here pipe-wise <coughs> here at Twins. Um, on March 14th, we are having a uh, Laodice pipe show here at Twins. It's going to be an awesome, awesome show. It's going to be at the Londonderry location from 12 to 4 p.m. And uh, in the past, um, for those of you who may not know, Laod- Laodice is not exactly a, a household name, but they own Peterson Pipes. They are the exclusive U.S. distributors for Savinelli and Rossi Pipes. Uh, they also own Cornell and Deal, and therefore own GLPs and uh, the uh, rights to sell uh, Presbyterian and some other well-known uh, tobaccos as well. When we've done a pipe show with them in the past, we've focused on Savinelli or Peterson, you know, one or the other. This time, uh, what we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, Savinelli, Peterson, Rossi in this first quarter of 2020 have all come out with a number of brand new lines uh, that are very different from what they have done in the past and uh, at this show on March 14th we're going to have complete sets of all the new lines from those three brands nice so instead of having a a broad selection of what Peterson or Savinelli or Rossi might have to offer. Yeah. We're bringing just the new stuff, but complete sets of the new stuff. So every size, every shape, and every finish of the new stuff that's out across those three lines we're going to have. And so, again, we're going to have something around 100 different pipes, uh, maybe even more. And um, there's going to be specials. There's going to be deals. There's going to be all sorts of great things going on with that. That's and I'm, I'm really pumped. I, I, you know, haven't, I haven't ever seen a pipe show that's done more than one brand like that before. So I think it's going to help us again to do something different. Yeah. And um, I'm really pumped about that. So put that on your calendars. Um, March 14th in Londonderry at Twins from 12 to 4. And uh, you can follow us uh, for all things pipe related on our Facebook tri- page at Twins Pipe Club, and also on Instagram at Twins Pipe Club. Dave, mm. tell me about your experience with this tobacco. It's different. I'm. What's different about it, Dave? It's different from what I usually smoke. Um, it's very the Latakia, like you said before, is just really hanging out in the background, um, adding like a little bit of a uh, texture to it mm. uh, in the retro hail because uh, you get that slight little smokiness. Um, the uh, the Cavendish, the Burleys, the Latakias, the the Virginias, they're all like perfectly melded together into like one flavor and i don't know how to describe it it's really it's really just smooth um it's fantastic Mm. the latake is just like a smoky shadow in the back yeah you know it's just it's hardly it's there but it's 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 almost like an apparition you know what i mean it's this it's it you look for it and it's gone but you know it's there it's not anywhere in the foreplay of this at all Mm. foreplay Mm. yes i said it i said foreplay (laughs) Mm. i should call you should call this instead of 1966 you should really call it the four s's the four s's smooth sweet smoky spice Mm. damn i think paul just so well balanced though in all four categories too it's just it's just a it is good it's it's a superb tobacco Mm. Superb. Today's episode has been brought to you by the word superb. <laughs> My power word for the day. Your power it. word for the day. Absolutely <laughs> superb. The 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 notes on the pipe tobacco are 
are just seamless. Mm. It's one right after another. It just you get the sweetness up front, then the oakiness, and you get the smokiness in the back, and then right after that, do the retro hail, and you got the spice right after that. And it's fantastic. It's mm. not something that's more than another. Mm-hmm. It's all well balanced, one right after another. It's not super complex. Definitely, I'd say a medium body on yeah. this, um, but it kind of has that fruity floral note that will attract a lot of guys if they're looking for something a little bit more than an aromatic Mm -hmm. Um, but it'll keep somebody like me in the seat smoking it because it has that nice medium body you get that oakiness you get the spice on the retro and it's such a smooth Mm -hmm. tobacco Mm -hmm. oh and then to pair it with the what is it the Blackbeard Manhattan Manhattan, Blackbeard Manhattan Mm. perfect most Absolutely feared pirate perfect. on the ocean. Arr. Arr. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, something happened this week that I just had to, to bring up. What happened? What happened? <clears throat> and that is that, uh, uh, you know, the FDA rules about cigars and tobacco yeah. that have uh, been basically... Uh, tossed around in court for a while um uh there's a lot of stuff up in the air you know and and uh but something has fallen out and something has fallen in our favor and that is that this past week the uh courts uh basically declared that the warning labels that the fda wanted cigars to put on their boxes which would take a third of the size of the box are illegal. Whoa. And that has been stripped. <laughs> awesome. Stripped from uh, any of the, the stuff that's coming down the pike. And I want to read a little bit uh, directly from the uh, judge's uh, decision here. And uh, in part, it said, you know, basically summaring, er, summarizing everything up. It says, quote, In summary, the FDA failed to articulate a reasoned basis for requiring warm, warning labels for premium cigars. Despite its professed interest in helping correct current misconceptions about newly deemed products, i.e. premium cigars, the FDA did not separately consider whether users or prospective users of premium cigars in fact harbor misconceptions about the product or otherwise remain in the dark about the health risks attendant to premium cigar use by failing to analyze whether consumers are in fact misinformed or underinformed as to premium cigar health effects the agency has failed to offer the rational connection between the facts and judgment required to pass muster under the arbitrary and capricious standard in other words the FDA was saying this is really bad therefore we want labels on it but you can't do that unless you know you have a reason for people not being aware of this and because as the as things un un folded in court it became clear that people who smoke premium cigars are older people who are spending, you know, $10, $12, you know, on a stick, you know, that they are not, they offered no proof that such a thing was actually going to be helpful. And therefore, it was just something that they wanted to do and not something that was necessary to do and therefore capricious. And it was axed. Amen. And I am very glad for that. That is a little bit of, uh, you know, because l- let's face it, chocolate is really bad for you. If you eat a lot of chocolate, you're going to get sick. You could, yeah. You know, why don't they have warning labels on that? True. You know? Well, if you drink a lot, if you drink more than, well, I don't know the exact amount, but if you drink a ton of water, that can kill you. Yeah. Overconsumption, you know. So there's a lot of things out there, you know. I don't see now. Let's talk about something that's a little bit, you know, maybe closer to home, like like alcohol, which has 
clear effects on the mind and body mm -hmm. uh, as you're consuming it. Um, there aren't these huge obnoxious warning labels on bottles of wine or on bottles of of uh, bubble whiskey, gum vodka, you know, <laughs> saying about how this can impair your, you know, uh, ability to drive or operate heavy machinery or kills your brain cells or anything like that, which we all know to be factually true. Yet they're wanting to do this with cigars. They're singling something out, and I think that. You know, finally, we've had some rationality come to this discussion. Now, you know, my question to you people is, you know, you know, we're not know-it-alls in the in the industry by any means, but this is where we live. This is where we work. How, you know, what do you think about this ruling? What do you think its implications are for for us? I know a lot of places were changing the way that they. Um, did their cigar boxing designs in anticipation of this going through and now it's been dumped so you know is, is this a real win for us or is this kind of you know something that you know well it's nice but it's not really a, a big huge win that we might think it is i think it's a huge win because here in twins in our humidor we 90 percent of the time display the boxes right we don't put it in sleeves as much. We do mm -hmm. so, with some lines, but for the most part, most of our humidor, the cigars we offer are in the boxes that they came in. I remember last year starting to receive in boxes, you know, different boxes, and starting to see that big white mm -hmm. FDA label, and it just took away mm -hmm. <clears throat> from the some of these beautiful boxes that these mm -hmm. cigars came in. Mm -hmm. So having that now struck down will... <laughs> Will make help to make the, the boxes stand out <laughs> and, and be beautiful again. Mm. It really is, and, and again, you know, we're not a, 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 a humidor that there. Are, you go to some places that they just take the cigars out of the box, they throw it in the sleeves, and put a label on it, and, mm -hmm. and, and that's it. Here, we like to be able to show off and showcase the boxes that they come in. It's going to make it that much more appealing. I think it's a tremendous, tremendous win. Yep, I think. You know, another place I see this happening is on uh, pipe tobacco. If you go out and look at the tins that are out there, there's this mix of, um, you know, as the anticipation about having to do this was coming, you see a, a third of the tin label being taken up by, you know, warning signs and, and uh, you know, this could be bad for your health and all this stuff. And, you know, putting aside whether or not, you know, you know, how true or necessary it is to put that stuff on there it really takes away from the tin you know the the thing that you see is this huge gaudy warning uh, as opposed to the the description of the thing that you're actually trying to buy and i'm wondering now now that this law has been struck if we're going to see those things go away and the tin designs all come back down to what they were before right mm. yeah. you know it really, it really does take away from like a lot of the, a lot of the the artistry that goes on, um, and that's a, that's a lot of it. Is like you know that's a lot of the, the uh, how you display and how you separate yourself as a cigar pipe tobacco manufacturer is your label, mm -hmm. you know because tobacco's brown, <laughs> you know, right. and, really? and, uh, <laughs> and it it pretty much looks the same. You know, so if it wasn't for these labels and these boxes and and the dressings that they get, um, it would be you know a really bland place to work. Mm. You know, and that's that's part of the the uh, the chemistry of it all. So it's nice to see that uh, someone's standing up for it. Yeah. Well, again, I I think the whole pointing fingers at the cigar industry and the pipe industry is really just singling out people in a way that does not really make sense um there are if you're going to do that to, uh to cigar and pipe smokers then you need to be consistent across the market with things that have health concerns and there are a lot of things out there like alcohol that have much more negative effects than uh smoking tobacco you know um <clears throat> i've never you know had anybody here at the bar you know smoke a cigar and then not be able to drive home 
you know i i do know people who have had too much to drink somewhere and are not able to drive home so where's the where's the real danger there you know what i'm saying yeah. and um or what's the greater danger and so starting with tobacco is really i think um more uh, uh prejudice trying to to um harp on something that some people out there think they can get most people to agree with than it being any kind of medical or scientific or moral sense to it. Do, do you all agree with that? Or, Absolutely. Or yeah. not? Yep, no we do. Mm. All right, so what's our final verdict here on the uh, fourth generation 1966 by Eric Stokeby? I'm just going to go back to my power word of the of the day superb it's a fantastic well balanced smooth sweet spicy little smokiness it's it's I, I could smoke this all day long mm. I really could I absolutely give this two thumbs up also superb it is such a great tobacco mm. it, again I just like Paul I'd be able to smoke this all day and I probably will <laughs> probably, get a, probably get a 10 and smoke it all day and you know because I smoke everything this is part of everything therefore the, I should smoke it absolutely and drink mm-hmm. it Dave what about you um, I think it is superb <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, the the the, app, the blend of it is really cool like the, it's got like a lot of different tobaccos in it um, but they're very well married together um, and the Latakia uh, in the background is just perfect for the retro hail. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. Two thumbs up. Yeah, I'd agree with this. This is one of my favorite blends by Eric Stokeby. It is, again, something that I think is very overlooked and underappreciated. It's a really nice, smooth blend. Um, nice, medium bodied. It's, you know, if you. And it crosses so many boundaries, too. If you like a sweeter tobacco, this is going to have something for you. If you like that smokiness from Latakia, uh, this is going to have that thing for you. Um, but it's not an English, and it's not an aromatic. It just kind of it offers parts of those different kind of blends, but it's not either of those things. It's a very unique kind of mixture, and kudos for Eric to putting this out on the market. It's a fantastic blend. And I just thought it went incredibly well with that Blackbeard Manhattan. It really just made the uh, tobacco shine in there, um, bringing out a lot of the Virginias and a lot of the nuttiness and even kind of like some cocoa notes from the Burleys. You know, the the, uh, maple in there, I think, brought a lot of that out, really played with it well, and um, very, very pleasant tobacco and pairing all around. Love it. You've been listening to Not Just Blowing Smoke, the podcast that brings the wealth of knowledge, expertise, and fun of Twins Smoke Shop, New England's premier smoke shop, right to you, wherever you are, whenever you want it. You can find us at our website, notjustblowingsmoke.com, and keep in touch with us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at Not Just Blowing Smoke. Thanks for listening, everybody. And that is not just blowing smoke.